Today's class is on skin structure, skin growth, and nutrition. Dermatology is a study of the skin, its structure, function, diseases, and treatments. Dermatologist is a doctor who treats the skin and its disorders and diseases. Cosmetologists and estheticians are skin care specialists who cleanse, preserve, beautify the skin with treatments and massage. Skin is the largest organ of the body that covers 3,000 square inches, weighs 9 pounds or 4 kilograms, protects the body from the environment, helps regulate body temperature. Part, the thinnest parts of the skin are eyelids. Of the, skin. the thickest parts of skin are soles of the feet. Skin is slightly moist, soft and flexible, smooth and fine-grained. Hair, nails, sweat and oil glands are appendages of the skin. Appendage of the skin means belong or attached to the skin. Skin is divided into epidermis and dermis and a fatty tissue underneath called adipose. Epidermis is the outer layer of the skin. The layers of epidermis are stratum corneum, stratum lucendum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum germinativum, which is also called the basal layer. Epidermis, the outer layer of the skin, is also called a scarf skin because it is 25 times thinner than the dermis, and the dermis is 25 times thicker than epidermis. The first layer of epidermis is stratum corneum, which is the top outer layer of the skin. It is made of protein keratin and contains dead cells. Dead cells are constantly shed away out of the skin by touching surfaces, scratching, or scrubbing using a facial scrub to rejuvenate the skin by the cosmetologists or estheticians. The second layer, stratum lucidum, has translucent cells that allow the light, the sunlight, to pass through the skin. That is the reason that we always recommend wearing a, a sunscreen to protect the skin. Stratum granulosum has distinct granules, granular layer that has granules that are dying and being pushed out to the skin to be pushed and shed away, those dead cells. Stratum spinosum is a spiny layer where the process of the shedding of the dead cells starts. Stratum germinativum is responsible for the new cells to be produced for the growth of the entire epidermis. Stratum germinativum, also called basal cell layer, produces melanocytes. Melanocytes are cells that make melanin, and melanin is the coloring pigment of the skin. The more melanin we have, the darker the skin. So in the summer, when the sun hits the skin, the, the stratum germinativum layer makes more melanin to protect our skin from the sun damage. If the sun damages the skin further and it's very strong and anyone who lays out in the sun might have a danger of having a skin cancer, which is called basal cell carcinoma. For that reason, sunscreen is a good idea to have on your skin before leaving the house. Dermis is the second layer of the skin. First epidermis, then dermis. Dermis is 25 times thicker than epidermis. And it has also other names. Derma, cutis, corium, true skin, and dermis. Why do you have to learn all of the names is at State Board they might ask you. Dermis is also called derma, cutis, corius, and and the answer would be the true skin. The two layers 
of dermis are papillary layer, reticular layer. Papillary layer is the outer layer of the dermis. It has dermal papillae, which are cone-shaped projections and looped capillaries. Papillary layer has tactile corpuscles, which are nerve endings that react to touch, pain, and uh, different kinds of sensations. Reticular layer is the deeper layer of epidermis that contains the hair follicle, which contains the hair bulb, which is fed by the blood vessels. So if the client doesn't have a good blood circulation, the hair might not grow well. Attached to the hair follicle is erector pili muscle. Sometimes it contracts and makes our hair stand up when we are cold or frightened. It is very distinctive in cats when a cat is frightened and the hair stands up as the erector pili muscles do contract and expand and return. Reticular layer also has lymph vessels. Sometimes the estheticians or cosmetologists do a special massage for lymphatic drainage to remove the impurities out of the lymph. Also fat cells and nerve endings. Also in reticular layer, oil glands, which are called sebaceous glands attached to the hair follicle, and sweat glands, which are called sudoriferous glands that have a coil called fundus and then a duct that opens all the way out into a spare sweat pore. The pore of the oil gland opens into the hair follicle. Wherever we have a lot of hair, we have the oil gland and if you clog the oil, a pimple happens or an acne. Subcutaneous tissue, also called adipose or subcutis, is a tissue underneath, directly underneath of the dermis, and it has a lot of fat cells, and it's responsible for skin elasticity. The older we get, the more we use the fat cells underneath of our skin around our face, and the first one to go is the fats underneath of the thinnest part of the skin, which is around the eyes. That's why people get wrinkles. The skin, hair and nails are nourished by blood. Nerves of the skin are motor nerve fibers, sensory nerve fibers, secretory nerve fibers. The motor nerve fiber is attached to the erector pili muscle which is attached to the hair follicle and when we're cold or we're frightened the motor nerve fibers and the muscle they cause goose flesh. Sensory nerve fibers react to touch, heat, cold, pain, pressure on the skin and send messages to the brain. Sensory nerve fibers are found in papillary layer of the skin in dermis and are abundant to fingertips. Secretory nerve fibers are regulating the sweat production that is distributed to the skin and the oil production or the sebum of the oil glands to be distributed to the skin. Skin color depends on the part of the body and the amount of melanocytes cells, the melanin cells, that are in the body. Melanin cells protect the skin against UV light exposure. There are two kinds of melanin, pheomelanin and eumelanin. Pheomelanin is red and yellow in color and the eumelanin is dark brown or black. Human hair has both eumelanin and pheomelanin to create a brown color. The more of the pheomelanin, the lighter the hair and rich in red and yellow colors. The more concentration of eumelanin, the darker the hair. Both melanins 
have to be present to create a good, rich hair color. Skin strength and flexibility depends on collagen and elastin. Collagen is a fibrous protein that gives form and strength to the skin and helps skin stretch and contract. Elastin is a protein similar to collagen that forms elastic tissue, gives flexibility and elasticity to the skin. Glands of the skin, sudoriferous sweat glands, and sebaceous or oil glands. Sweat gland sudoriferous glands are made of a coil called fundus and a tube-like duct that goes all the way up to the skin, terminates at the skin with an open pore and to palms are abundant to palms, soles, forehead and armpits. Activated by heat, exercise, emotions and certain drugs. Controlled by nervous system. Secretes 1 to 2 pints of salty liquid, eliminating waste products. For that reason, because we need the sweat to come out from our pores, we need to use deodorant instead of antiperspirant because perspiring is necessary to remove waste products out of the skin. Oil gland is attached to the hair follicle. Oil gland is also called sebaceous gland. The oil, also called sebum, comes out through the hair follicle through the oil pore on the skin and if it gets hardened it can create an acne or blackhead. Acne is a chronic inflammatory disorder of sebaceous glands. Papule is a small round elevation on the skin that contains no fluid but may develop pus. Pustule is a pimple containing pus. The skin has the following functions, protection, sensation, heat regulation, excretion, secretion, and absorption. Skin protects us from UV radiation and bacterial invasion. Skin feels heat, cold, pressure, pain, touch. Heat regulation, skin regulates our body heat. 4. Excretion. The skin excretes by perspiration taking salt and chemicals with it. Secretion. Secretes the sebum to lubricate the skin. And absorption. Skin has very little absorption. That is why when people get massages, the lubricant or the cream is massaged and forced through the skin for it to be pliable. Skin nutrition and needs. Skin needs protein, keratin, vitamins, water, hydration, exercise, and elimination of waste products by exercising and removing the waste through sweat glands to look nice, smooth, pliable, and healthy. Avoid excess salt, sugars, alcohol, and smoking. Take vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E. Drink ample amount of water. Because mild dehydration slows down the metabolism by 3%. Drinking water reduces hunger pangs, reduces cracked skin, eliminates waste, regulates body temperature, aids to proper digestion. Water is an essential item for life. Water composes 70% of body weight. For your benefit, please review the educational video five times to ensure positive recall when doing a test.